Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday service, it's Sunday, July the 5th, 2020. I'm here at the Bodie Hart Yurt in Northampton, uh, New Hampshire. Um, this is a lovely place called Sandwich Mountain Sanctuary. There's a yurt, a labyrinth, a beautiful cabin, and um, they call this awakening to the heart. Your vision will become clear only when you look into your heart. Who looks inside awakens. So you'll see behind me all these beautiful statues and images of uh, Neem Karoli Baba, who was Ram Dass's teacher. Hindu image, Shiva Nataraj, Jesus and Mary over here. Oh, there's a picture of the Buddha, which you can't see from where you are. Beautiful space, and I have three of my lovely friends here who are joining us this morning in person. And uh, those of you who get to see us online, it's a very special day for us to be here. Um, we're in the middle of uh, the mountains, the White Mountains, beautiful uh, sandwich notch road, so we get to see the beauty of uh, nature in a quiet space in this beautiful meditation here. So welcome. Um, we'll start, they have a beautiful, uh, I'm gonna use that word a lot today, a beautiful temple bell here. So we'll start with the temple bell so you can get a feel for that, and then we'll, uh, we'll begin. bring our center of attention to our hearts with the intention of awakening our heart in this moment and offering up a prayer. O oh, great and glorious God, we welcome you this morning. We welcome you into this sacred space and into our hearts. We thank you for the glory of the new day. Let us feel your presence in and around us now. Let us feel your peace which passes understanding. May we rest in it and be changed by it. May we learn to love one another as you love us. We thank you for all of the beautiful teachers that have come to earth to lift us up, to remind us of who we are in the oneness of God, in the one body of the Christ. We celebrate today with the Eucharist, with song, with prayer, as we turn our full attention toward you to receive the blessings that you have in mind for us today. We offer our hearts up to you now in Jesus and Mary's names, name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about interdependence. So I saw a sign yesterday, yesterday was the 4th of July, Independence Day. I saw a sign that said Interdependence Day, and I thought, what a great idea to change that. After 240 some years of celebrating our freedom from uh, colonization, um, we can shift again into another way of being in the world. Instead of being independent from our colonizers, we can be interdependent with one another, with the earth, with all people, with all cultures, with all races, with all religions. Wouldn't that be nice? So, let us start with the scripture from James, from the book of James. James 2.14 says, Who profits, my brethren, Though a man say he has faith and have not works, 
Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them nothing that they are needful for in the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. We have some music from my sister Audrey. I'm so close to you, baby, but I'm so far away. There's a silence between us, so much to say. You're my strength and my weakness, my faith and my doubt. We gotta meet in the middle to work this thing out. More love. I can hear our hearts crying. More love. I know that's what we need. More love. To flow in between us. To take us and hold us. To lift us above. If there's ever an answer, it's more love. We're afraid to be young, so we fill up our days. We run on the treadmill, keep saving away. Till there's no time for talking about troubles of mind. And the doors are all closing between your heart and mine. Oh, no. I can feel my heart's crying. Oh, no. I know that's what we need. Oh, no. Between us, to take us and hold us, lift us above. If there's ever an answer, it's more love. We still for a moment try to open our hearts. Look out around us, people fighting their wars. They think they'll be happy. To settle its scores. Oh, love. I can feel our hearts crying. Oh, love. I know it's what we need. Oh, love. To flow in between us, to take us and hold us, lift us above. If there's ever an answer, it's more love, more I think we had a little technical difficulty, but let's see if we're still going here. But we got to hear that beautiful song, More Love, by my lovely sister Audrey. Um, so I wanted to talk today about interdependence, about what Jesus says about loving one another. And um, some of you may know that I'm a, I'm a psychologist as well as a minister. and. <clears throat> When I, I teach developmental psychology and when I think about the way our, our culture, our Western culture has been with the, since the independence from 
from England, from Britain. Um, we've been kind of in this adolescent mode of, of uh, development. And this adolescent mode is we elbowed our way, we fought our way free from the authorities that we were under, as an adolescent should do. Um, and then we um, went our own way and, and uh, you know, had some good ideals, but then we got misguided and we became very uh, self-absorbed and self-centered and self-serving. So that's a problem because that means it's all about me, right? It's all about me, all about you. Um, so we worry about ourselves, we think about ourselves, we think about our own people or our own race or our own religion, or, um, our small circle of concern. And when, when we mature as people, we start to have a wider view and the view is um, outward. What can I do to help? Um, I have respect for all people. I, um, I am uh, responsible and helpful. And uh, I am considerate of how other people are doing. And I act that way. So a beautiful quote by a, an Indian poet named Tajori. I might not be saying that right. Let's see if I can uh, find his name to give him due credit. Rabindranath Tajori. He said, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. So that's what I want to talk about today because like in the scripture from James, it says that faith without works is dead. And so we can't really call ourselves Christians if we don't do what Jesus did. Last week we talked about the miracles Jesus did, healing, feeding people, caring for people, um, raising the dead, taking care of the poor. And so he admonishes us in, in his scripture to do the same thing, to visit the lonely widow and the orphan, to uh, feed those who are hungry, to do something tangible, to act for the benefit of other people in self-forgetting service. And that's what adults do, right? We look to children and we say, this child is dependent and needs us to care for them. This person is ill and needs to be cared for, and needs to know that someone cares about them. Um, uh, this elderly person is lonely and needs a visitor. Um, how can I bring the love of Christ to another human being? How can I lighten their load? If I'm blessed with resources or privilege or flowers in my garden or the ability to bake a loaf of bread or whatever it is, a phone, I can call someone, I can do something that will actively relieve suffering. And that's what Jesus asks us to do. He asks us to be like him, be part of the body of Christ that relieves suffering, that serves other people. So adolescence, as adolescents, when we came from Europe, we took over the country, we took what we wanted, we fought people, we killed people, we took their resources. We stole from them. We stole people from Africa and enslaved them. We were kind of wild and we still are, in fact. So in this time that we're living in right now, we're experiencing the growing pains of growing up, growing up into maturity that says, I am responsible. I am my brother's keeper, my brother, my sister's keeper. I'm responsible for loving my neighbor, even my enemy. Jesus says, love your enemy, love those who persecute you and revile you, love them. Well, that's a big, that's a big uh, calling, but it requires that we raise up and stop thinking about ourselves and say, if there is someone who's hating, that person is suffering because it's not our nature to hate. It's our nature to care for one another and take care of one another. So since that's our nature and since Jesus came to teach us how to love people, we can love even those people who hate us because we can say to ourselves, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. If they're hating, they will suffer for the hating. So in the Buddhist tradition, um, the teaching is that life is suffering and that the life is suffering because of uh, attraction, that's wanting things, desiring things, or aversion, that's not wanting things or pushing things away. So attraction and aversion cause suffering. I want, I want, I want. 
that person who's just worried about themselves, wanting, 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 that person will suffer. The one that says, I don't want that, get it away from me, pushing, pushing, pushing things away. Rather than opening to embrace what comes to me and who is around me and what's around me that might change me. And maturity is looking to other people, to the outside world, to say, how are we interconnected? How are we interdependent? If I harm someone, I'm harming myself as well. If I don't share, someone is being harmed, which is, will eventually be harmful to me. Um, because I will see that we're meant to be together and to share. And so all the things, I love that poster that says, uh, everything you need to know you learn in kindergarten, right? Like hold, hold someone's hand, share with them. You know, uh, don't hit, use your words, you know. Those are very simple things that we need to remember. And, and the, the process of becoming interdependent means that we have to get outside of ourselves. And all that's happening in the world right now, the COVID, the, the um, uprisings uh, about uh, social injustice and racism, it's requiring that we get outside of ourselves. We say, I wear a mask in public for the sake of those people who, who might actually be really harmed if they got this disease. I want to do my part because I care about the whole. Um, I want to do my part in looking at my own privilege and saying, where am I, where do I have, um, you know, racist privilege, you know, privilege as a white person, privilege as a, a man in power, privilege as a, at a certain, for a certain class of people. What privilege do I have and how can I use that to leverage uh, social justice? How can I use that to help? Um, we don't have to um, beat ourselves up for having privilege. We just have to root it out. We just have to root it out and learn to share. Um, you know, I was reading, so right now, I think a half a million people have died from COVID across the planet. It's a lot of people. But every year, nine million people die of starvation. So let that sink in. All the efforts we're putting into this, and I don't say that it's not important efforts. Of course, it's important. We don't want people to get sick and die. But every year, 9 million people, many of them children, are dying of starvation. So if we think about that, and we say, as humans, not just Christians, as humans whose hearts are made to love, how can we let that stand? How can we not do something to alleviate that? Now, I'm not saying that people aren't doing anything. I'm just saying that if we are lax in thinking about ourselves, then we will be part of the problem and not part of the solution, which is there's plenty of food on the planet to feed everyone. We don't, we throw away a lot of food. This country is ridiculously wasteful, not just individually, but as a culture, you know, when there's too, you know, there's a surplus of grain, it gets thrown away. When there are people starving all over the planet. I saw something the other day that said um, there's more fruit in, in uh, American shampoo than on the table of the poor. So that's, that gives you pause, right? So that's what we need to do. And I think what COVID is, is letting us do is pause and reconsider our priorities, reconsider the kind of humans we want to be. And that requires us to look at our everyday life and say, where can I give more? Where can I serve more deeply? Where can I be more um, self-forgetting instead of thinking about what about me or mine? Self-forgetting and, and, and give over to anyone, anyone, our, our neighbors, our families, um, people we don't know, people in other countries, people who are worse off than us. How can we, how can we um, give to them? Sorry, I'm going to have to fix this again because we're having a little little difficulty here with this. There we go. Not that I don't want you to see Nora, but it's just a black screen there. <laughs> um, so, you know, oftentimes people uh, move away from religion because they don't want to feel guilt. They don't want to be guilted. And I think we have to remember there's a difference in <clears throat> when you get to be a, in the age of maturity that you say, it's not about guilt, it's about responsibility, it's about remorse. So my son, um, my lovely son, he's 22 now, but when he was about 19, he, um, 
he came home from college at Christmas and he took my car and was going to visit friends. And I said, it's icy out. Just text me when you get there. So I know where you are. Well, you know, it's a half hour drive where he was going an hour later. I said, well, I'm starting to get worried. I haven't heard from him. So I text him, I text him, no response, no response, no response. I text him again, call him, no response. Now he's 19. So you know, this thing is attached to his hand, right? So it's not like, like he forgot it somewhere. Right. So finally, Finally, after almost two hours, and my mama heart is saying, oh my gosh, he just came home. He's off the road, but who knows, in the lake, whatever. And I'm not a worrying person, but um, we had an agreement. And I said to him before he left, I'm like, promise me you'll text me so I know where you are. Um, so he did. So he called me. And then I was like, dude, what the heck? What the heck? You know, like, he's like, mom, like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I'm like, it is a big deal because you're not considering that there's someone here who is concerned for you and you promised and gave your word and then you didn't follow through. So that's an adolescent, right? And so the next day he's like, you're treating me like a child. And I said, no, no, no. I'm treating you like an adult. I expect you to be responsible for keeping your word or thinking about other people. That's what an adult does. An adult doesn't just go do whatever the heck they want without any concern for people. Now at 19, that's an age appropriate thing to do, right? You know, kids, they forget. But when we get to a certain age, generally mid twenties, when our executive functions are all on board, that's when there's no longer an excuse for being selfish. There's no longer an excuse for not sharing, for not paying attention, for not loving your neighbor. There's no longer an excuse. After that, it's just <clears throat> immaturity and a person of age, which is an embarrassing quality to have. You know, uh, it's an embarrassing quality because you think, oh, I'm just thinking about me. Well, yeah, actually, we're supposed to get wiser as we age, be kinder. This is the point of having time on the planet to learn how to love, not to, you know, the, the quote I talked about, uh, about where do you find joy? People who are self-absorbed absorbed are not happy people. I don't know if you've noticed that. They're always concerned about themselves. They're spiraling back to themselves over and over again. They are not happy people. And if you want to be happy, it seems our culture thinks happiness is the highest uh, virtue. If you want to be happy, you have to give. And Jesus said, <clears throat> it's more blessed to give than to receive. So think about that. Um, and I think you know when you give how good it feels. Anytime you give, you get blessed also. So it's a, it's a um, you know, self-perpetuating experience when you give. You feel joyful, you feel happy, you're like, this is so great, I wanna help, I wanna give. Um, and then you forget about yourself and then you become part of the, the, um, the elder, the wise elders, mature humans who say, this is how human, this is what humanness looks like. You know, we, we're, we're grown into humans. First, we're beautiful little children who are dependent. Then we become independent, and we need to be. We need to break free of what, what people think we're supposed to be so we can figure out who we are. But in that, we have to figure out that the, the, the ultimate thing we want to do is not be self-absorbed, but to grow into a mature human being who loves people and who helps and who's connected to the earth and to, um, to people and who notices when people are suffering and who stops being self-absorbed. Um, I'm reading a really good book right now by Martin Prechtel, and it's called Long Life, Honey in the Heart. Beautiful book about um, how, you know, our culture doesn't have the initiations that, that we used to have or that the indigenous peoples have that say, now you're a child, now you're an adolescent, now you're an adult. And those, those the rituals of initiation into adulthood um, have gone by the wayside and so what do we have we have call it we send people to college and they drink their way through four years and, and uh, that's their initiation really poor initiation by the way sets up all kinds of bad things you know like uh you know just um <clears throat> learning to get a grade you know instead of learning to, to to supplement your life or raise you up and i'm making broad broad generalizations here but that's how it was for me in college i got a's but i got a's because that's what i was supposed to do not because i wanted to learn a whole bunch of stuff by the time I got to graduate school, I was more mature. I did it differently. Um, but partying is not a great initiation for adulthood. Not a great idea. Um, and not to say that we want to, you know, put people in any kind of shackles in adolescence, but experimentation with some guidance and support and not just like free reign. 
um, our, the best development is kind and firm. You know, you hold, you hold uh, in ever increasing freedom the boundaries for uh, one to grow, and then you say, okay, now, now you're in adulthood, and now we expect a certain way of being from you. And if I, you know, I've worked in in home care with elderly people in hospice for a long time, and people get to the end of their life and they have been self-absorbed their whole life, they they are not happy when they look back over their life with the eyes of uh, of death upon them, they look back and they, they regret a lot. Um, so, and uh, I don't believe that they're gonna go to hell because they didn't give, but what I do believe is their soul will suffer. And I think that's hell, their soul will suffer for not having loved. Um, so I, you know, it's my job as a minister to minister to souls. And I say to souls, rise up, rise up into the maturity of adult life, of human life, that is um, focused on service, that's focused on giving, it's focused on loving and, and um, paying attention. What you put your attention on gets loved by you. So if you put your attention on money, then that is your treasure, right? Put your attention on love and your treasure is love. Um, so let me see if I have any other notes here of you. So these are the things that Jesus said for us to do. Do no harm. Feed the hungry, help the poor, visit the widow and orphan, clothe the naked, bear the infirmities of the sick, visit the sick and those imprisoned. Pretty clear. Pretty clear what we need to do. Jesus also said, love one another, love your neighbor, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So if there, it's not about loving your neighbor instead of yourself, but loving your neighbor as yourself. And then, of course, there's the golden rule, which is uh, do unto others as you want them to do unto you, which is the same as loving your neighbor as yourself, I suppose. So if we say that we're faithful, if we say that we're Christians or any other tradition, because the Buddha is about compassion, Krishna is about compassion, Kuan Yin is about compassion, every tradition is about compassion. Um, uh, Noon Karoli Baba, this uh, teacher, who was the teacher of Ram Das, told Ram Das, <clears throat> he said, Ram Das, love everyone and tell the truth. There's some good advice for life. Love everyone and tell the truth. Um, so I, I hope that you'll meditate on those things, that you will see where you can do more. And I'm not saying that you have to, um, well, what Jesus would say is, if you want to, if you want to know God, give everything away, give everything away, and uh, or sell everything, give it to the poor, and follow me. That would be an extreme case of uh, of following Jesus, and not a bad idea. But if you want to improve, you can pray to know who are the people that I am to serve. How? What are the ways that I am to serve? And we can all serve um, in different ways, and then everyone gets served. That would be ideal. We find our way to serve, and we give generously from that. And then we don't worry about ourselves, because when you're in that flow, in that graceful flow of giving, the abundance comes back around to you, and you have more than you need, more, more of everything that you need. And you need very little. The more mature you are, the more love you give, the more love you receive, there's not really a lot you need. So that's different from our culture, which says get more, bigger, better, faster, stronger, you know. Spend all your time doing that, spend all your money doing that. Um, but if we're going to survive as a, as a race, as the human race, if our beautiful planet's going to survive, we have to grow up, we have to mature into mature spiritual beings who can teach the next generations how to cherish the earth, how to cherish people, how to love people. There's nothing more beautiful to me as a mother than to see my children taking care of other people, noticing, oh, that person has something in their arms and they can't get the door, let me get that for you. Or let me take something, let me take something from you. Um, it's a beautiful thing to see young people move to give naturally because that is our natural state. And if we've gone askew, we've gone away from our natural state, we've missed the mark, which is what the word sin means. If we miss the mark, all we have to do is recalibrate. Our hearts will know what to do. Our hearts will know if we listen. 
Our hearts will know who to love and when and how if we listen, if we're paying attention. But you see, if we're paying attention to that, we have to kind of forget about ourselves. And then we can let God and the universe take, worry about us because we too will be, we too will be served and have everything we need. So we don't, we have this weird idea that if we, if we give things that we're losing something, it's not how it works in, in the universe, in, in the, the land of the soul. Whatever you give comes back to you many fold. That is a spiritual truth in every tradition. So that's what I have to say about service today, about love. And I hope you will take that to heart. And I'm hoping that my sister has a song in mind to add to our service. We'll see if she's got something. If she doesn't, I'm sure I can think of something. Right now? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I let her choose this song, so it's a surprise to all of us. <laughs> no pressure, of course. <laughs> You should sing along if you want to away from anyone. A lot of sunlight happening here. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. I look like a ghost. Oh well. Or an angel. Oh.
O Mother, Father most glorious and Christos most high, through the great masters of earth, Jesus and Mary, we beseech thee to absolve us of all error and misgiving. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord of earth, thou grantor of all prayers, it is my word that this bread shall be transmuted into the flesh of thy body and thy mind. Being transformed, I commend it in your memory for the forgiveness of sins. Glory unto the Creator for its power. Glory unto the mediators for their life. Glory unto the Holy Spirit for its nature. For thus is transformed the essence of earth and heaven. Amen. Into the blood of our most glorious Lord of earth, Jesus Christ. O God of creation, through thy holy word, and through the power granted unto me over the life and the death of creation, do I commend myself unto the transformed wine and blood of our Lord Jesus for the raising of the consciousness. And may now the Holy Spirit descend through it and infuse it with life eternal. Amen. All souls gathered here partake of the body of Jesus and know that by the fruits of your labors, you are absolved of all past error and misgiving. Thus you are a partaker of the life through Christ Jesus. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. Name of the creator, the mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
drink of the blood of Jesus, which is infused with the essence of the great Christos above. Now go forth and let your light shine before all. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. Name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, O Holy Ones, for the blessing of this sacrament, for the blessing of this day, for this time and space to remember you. We thank you for drawing us into your heart of love. We pray that you would transform us and purify us, clarifying our minds and our hearts, that we might love others as you love us. And may our planet be blessed in your abundant grace. May humankind grow into wisdom, into the enlightenment of our consciousness, that we might remember ourselves as love. May all people have what they need in this day, we pray in your names. In the name of the Creator, of the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Blessings to you on your day. Um, I may or may not be on at four o'clock today for rosary. I will text you later and let you know that on Facebook, okay? Blessings to you, peace. Take care now.